And once again, history repeats itself where everybody comes for Adrian again. Unattractive about you. Adrian has this ability to swap sides. And um, I've been warned about him a few times to be careful what I say around him. Um, just for the very reason of... Wrong. But what is this just the other day when, when Adrian said, what's one thing that's positive about me and one thing that's negative? Everybody, nobody had anything negative to say about young Adrian, did they? I feel like, I feel bad to say it, but based on conversations, not like, obviously conversations that have been squashed and stuff, but I'd have to say Adrian's a bit two-faced, like, do you get what I'm saying? Like, he might go to you and chat to you and say this person and that, but then be buddy-buddy with them the next time. Do you get what I'm saying? So I would have to say it's a bit of Adrian. Everybody is mentioning Adrian's name. Me too, I mentioned Adrian's name. You don't know whether you're going to say something that might upset him. And before you know it, you probably start bitching to the girls, which I don't like. But like I said, I do find that a bit annoying. Hey guys, it's Marlon Morali. Hope you guys are doing well today. So the brand new, obviously, Bachelor episode part two. I think it wasn't even brand new. It came out last week, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to review at length. Um, but I was able to review the first part. But we're going to get into the second part where, you know, they all were obviously asked to have these questions. And this type of task is always very interesting and very intrusive. Simply because I, it just obviously, people don't expect it to happen. They don't expect it to come from people that they have seen with their friends. And obviously we've seen this task, whether it be on Love Island or whether it be in terms of like a tweet edition or Big Brother. So when you have a house, people... And when you, have people, when you have people who are living in a house, this type of task is always very interesting to see how people react, not only in that moment, but in the coming days ahead. And although everybody was able to, you know, pick on everybody else, like Chimo was saying that B-Money is the most thirstiest person, Nunu was saying that there are bullies in this house, and Nunu was saying, she made a very good point about Mark, saying Mark has this energy for her, but we won't have this type of energy for Esther. Now, I know, I know Esther would love to hear that because it's like, a, like an ego kind of like injection, but at the same time, it's actually a very interesting question. Why does he have this energy for some? certain people who he knew was being bullied as he spoke about it before on came to defense but now he's obviously using that as to his ammunition but the main crux of this particular video that I wanted to do, because I'm going to break this episode into two parts, the debate and Adrian, is that obviously Adrian was targeted again. And, you know, it's quite interesting that Esther would call him Two-Face, considering that he obviously helps in the kitchen and everything, but we don't know what goes on 24 hours of the day. Um, and obviously she said herself that she felt very bad about saying that. And then we have Mark saying that she, he doesn't know what his, where his mind's at, what he's always thinking. He's... he's good friends with the girls, therefore he might bitch to the girls, and you know, to Adrian that came as a massive, massive shock, simply because he's obviously even baked a cake for somebody. The way I say it is, the only reason, if I'm baking you a cake, I see you as my friend. Like, I'm not baking a cake for some stranger down the road, I'm not baking a cake for Susan, it's not gonna happen. So, the fact that he's obviously doing stuff like this, and people are speaking about him like this, I can understand how he feels a bit, you know, just like crazy. And obviously we have B-Money who's stirring the pot, forcing him to speak, now I feel like that, was just like not needed. I feel like he was being an enabler of an uncomfortable environment and it just was not necessary. The reason why I say this is because he clearly, he's clearly expressed that he doesn't feel comfortable to speak. He clearly expressed that he doesn't want to talk about it and he has nothing to say of his mind. But then Bimani says he wants to talk about it, which is fine. But then you're, you're, the fact that irritates me is that you're constantly goading him to speak. And it's like, don't do that because he's clearly uncomfortable in that situation. Why are you going to enable it for no reason? And um, yet, yet again, he was the crux of this situation. Yet again, he became the target. And it was interesting because Bimani did express that they all had positive things to say about him when he was crying, but behind the scenes, when he's not there, a lot of negative a lot of negative things can be said as well. Now granted, not everybody's perfect, so some people will speak badly about you or you know critique you as well as being positive. But the fact that people were so positive to his face and saying the stuff behind him, you know, and some of the stuff actually quite brutal, it's a bit of a shame unfortunately. It was quite interesting as well, Nunu and Carnage were sitting next to each other and Nunu was just like uh, you know, I don't feel like Carnage should be here. And Artilia as well, how these people are a waste of space, or they're not really people as new characters. And I feel like although Carnage has an impact, I can understand where people are coming from with Artilia, but I do also feel like she's very truthful, and that does bring a fresh breath of air to the show. So really and truly, at first I understood she was Team Furniture, but she changed from Team Furniture Child, she became that fun, that piece of furniture where everybody just loves in the house. For a quick minute, when she spoke about her life, and everything she goes through, she really has this truthfulness about her, and you can appreciate it, it's kind of just fresh. Freshful. Freshful? 
Um, but anyways, and, and then we have honey, and I feel like my girl, my girl honey is so up Chima's ass. It's like, to stop begging for a friendship, it's not cute, you look, you're just, it's just ridiculous how the debate was about disrespecting yourself if you continue to be with somebody, um, and you continue to be in a relationship, and if somebody cheats, but honey doesn't see herself as disrespecting herself, begging for a friendship that clearly Chima does not want. And the fact that Chima obviously used that as an emotional manipulation t technique to obviously influence Honey to say to her, don't pick X, Y, Z for the debate, pick me. Like, it's just not right at all. Like, now you're acting like an idiot. I don't know what you're doing. Like, okay, don't, don't you, you don't, you don't friend somebody because they've betrayed you. Keep it at that, keep a distance and move on. Don't use it to, as emotional abuse. Don't use it as emotional guilt to manipulate someone because it's just not fair. And it's like, honey, just like, I don't know why you're begging for Esther and Chiang's relationship. I don't really get it. They clearly don't want to be your friends. Be civil, be acquaintances, and move on. Like, it is, it is what it is. So, like, it's all we have to do in a house. But yet again, we have Adrian, who is unfortunately somebody who becomes... The, I don't want to say the word bullied, but sometimes I feel like he does get bullied in that house, um, especially in, in this situation. But at the same time, people are able to express their opinions and how they feel. But obviously, how he feels is very isolated in that heated moment. No one mentioned Gogo, no one mentioned Lucas, and no one mentioned Riva, which puts these three as probably the most liked housemates, because nobody has any strong and negative opinions about them. I'm just waiting for the damn delivery man. You know you want to wait for your you want to wait for your package. You don't want anybody getting that package. Um, and I'm not going to sit outside because it's cold. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about this particular video. Let me know what you guys think about that episode with Adrian. You know, just being the target and being once again, it's like is history repeating itself, or are they in the right? Or what do you feel about Adrian? Do you feel like they are right about him? Do you feel like he's somebody you can't really guess? Um, and the fact that they share a room with him and you've been there for a lot of days now and you're sharing rooms with him and you're still at this point mark where you feel like you don't know where his head's at and you don't know what he's thinking and he might be bitching to people like he might be, might be a bit paranoid yourself however when he had the interaction with, be with the money saying that he has an inferior complex to dissect and analyse this it could be true picked on the fact that I was probably bigger than him I'm bigger than most guys now I take a lot of pride in going to the gym and looking after myself, that's my own choice, just like anybody else has their own choice. But I feel with him, it's kind of a deflection of what he's lacking in, or as we like to say, inferior complex. He may feel inferior to me, so therefore he picks on that. Um, Considering that B Money does pick on him for being big and so forth, nobody else does. However, the other perspective is that Mark's just saying this because he really has internalized his ego. He really has internalized himself being X, Y, Z because of his physique and so forth. But at the same time, why is somebody always picking on you being big? Uh, do they have an inferior complex? I, mean, I don't know, but I find that that interaction I found very interesting between those two. But let me know what you guys think. Hit me up on my Instagram, please, Marad and Skumarali. I massively appreciate it. And then subscribe to this channel of mine. Just click that button, subscribe, follow me on Instagram. I would massively, massively appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys soon.